Hey, what is up? Welcome back to episode two of Snapshot. My name is Sergey Ivanov, and welcome to my video series where I will take you through the photography process as I do it from all the way from conceptualization of photographs to the final editing and printing of my photography work. Welcome to episode two. I got a surprisingly good response and feedback from the last episode, so I'm gonna keep doing these videos. Two weeks ago, I talked about how I went to the old abandoned strip club, Electric Monkeys, and took photos there in the process of finding that place and actually photographing that location. And this week, I'm gonna tell you a brief story about the old, I don't know what it was, it was something. So I say it's just a building. I don't know what it was. It has been abandoned for so long that I looked on Google Maps and like everything. I could not find what it was or what it used to be. There is no record of what that establishment was. So whatever it is, I don't know. My guess is based on how it looks, you know, a quick mart, you know, some sort of gas station type sort of thing. You go in there, you buy a bag of chips and then you get out. So to give you some context, I found this location. Actually, it was a couple weeks ago. I was going with my family. We were going camping. We were going camping on the lake near Jonathan's Creek. And on the way there from my house, you pass through a place called Simpsonia. And on the way from my house to Simpsonia, there is a big long stretch of basically just backwoods, cornfields, you know, houses that's basically it i mean obviously there's also a dollar general there because i mean why not i mean dollar generals are everywhere like i open up the door to my closet once and boom dollar general there how'd they even get there i don't know so a couple weeks ago when we actually were on the way there we passed this place it was actually next to a dollar general sandwiched right between a dollar general and a cornfield and so I saw that location and we were on the way to go camping, so I didn't stop to take photos then. But I actually thought about it as, and I thought to myself that would be a place that I would want to go shoot because there were some very colorful, there was a big vibrant red trailer, big vibrant Coke machine, or sorry, Pepsi. I'm in the South, we say Coke. There was a whole bunch of interesting elements to the right and left and the whole th place itself was pretty interesting just because of how just sort of blank but at the same time vibrant some very key elements are so i decided all right i'm gonna take some photos there and plan a photo session now i will say this first off as i said in the last video i don't film the b-roll for these videos while i'm taking the photo i take the photos first, then I make the video and film the B-roll afterwards. So what you're seeing in the B-roll is sort of a recreation of what it would be like for me to take those photos. You're gonna see a big difference between when I actually take the photos on the video and the photos themselves. I went there at about seven o'clock. So I brought the tripod with me, which I don't normally do because I knew I was just going to need it because I was shooting Kodak Vision 3 250D, which is one stop lower than what I normally shoot. I normally shoot Kodak Vision 3 500T, but on that day I had some 250D in the camera, so that was what I shot it with, and I think it did suit the subject better. As always, I shot with a Pentax K1000 with either 28mm or 50mm lens. So because I knew that it was evening, and I was going to do longer exposures because of the 250 ISO film, I brought a tripod with me, I set up the tripod, I find some compositions, I take them, it was a fairly simple process. I mean, Base, because of how it was, because the because of the fact that it was sort of surrounded on all sides by rows, I was a little bit limited in where I could shoot it from. I could either shoot it from across the road or in the parking lot itself with wide angles. So those were basically my two options and that's what I did. Now I will say this, one of the biggest differences between when I actually took the photos and when I recreated the taking of the photos for the B-roll is that I live in Kentucky and in Kentucky Lately, it has been insanely hot, meaning like during the day, it's 96, 97, 98 degrees, and that's just normal. That is 
just how it is normally. That's not even the high. So when I film this, as you can see, I'm wearing two layers, a shirt underneath and then a shirt on top of that. I'm wearing jeans and it's about 100 degrees outside. I am sweating like a madman. I'm sweating like I'm in the sauna at the gym. So I get the photos, get the exposures, get in my car, pack everything up, and then I go home. Simple enough, process the photos, get the contact sheet made, and I select the photos, the ones I wanna scan, the ones I wanna edit, and the ones I wanna show. All right, so this is the first photo that we have. It is from across the street, as you can tell, the road's in it. Here's the thing, I cropped a lot. And not, and I know that in the last video, I said that I enjoy cropping to cinematic aspect ratios, 185, 220 to one. I, I do that a lot, but this one actually, I cropped to that aspect ratio just out of necessity. If you look on the left, if you look at the raw scan, there was some stuff on the left that I did not want to include, mainly the Dollar General. I thought that I got it out of the frame when I took it, but I guess not. But the way I've cropped it now, I think it's decently well. If I were to do it again, I would actually shoot it a bit more straight on than I have. What are things I like about it? Obviously, because really one of the whole points of this photo is obviously I see in color. There are a lot of photographers, like specifically black and white, who are who always tell you, if you shoot black and white, you need to see in black and white. Well, that's one of the reasons why I stopped shooting black and white is because I could not get used to seeing in black and white. I saw in color and I, color was an important part of what I wanted to show in my photography. So that's what you're gonna see a lot of my photos is particular uses of color. And this is no different. Obviously the reds on the Vision 3 film my goodness, I don't need to tell you that they're insanely bright. Again, did not do a single thing to these. And I think the color contrast of the red and then there's just the little dash of blue on the Pepsi uh, vending machine and on the blue tarp behind the window. I like the photo, but here's what I have a problem with. There's too much breathing room to the point where it sort of gives you too much of a view and I don't want that I think I would crop in a little bit tighter and thankfully I do have some exposures that I did so let's get to the next one this is the second exposure and this one is one that's more straight on it takes away some of the more distracting elements on the on the sides gives you more focused view of the subject which is the building and the bright red and blue colors that's really the whole points of the photograph what's something i like obviously this one is cropped in a lot tighter it focuses on the point it's got a lot less distracting elements there's not too much free space i think this is just the perfect amount of free space on the left and right and on the top and bottom i think it's perfect in that way one thing that i wish i would have gotten that i actually did get in the last one is if you look in the photo before this there's actually the bright red fire hydrant i would actually include if i did this again i would include it on the right side of this composition just to sort of balance it out because you look on the left and it's these bright bright just insane reds and then on the right it's it almost is like unfairly balanced because you look on the right there's basically nothing there's a little bit of the blue with the tarp but i think you really need the red on the right side with the fire hydrant to sort of balance it out All right, so this is the last exposure I took. And I think this is probably the best one because it does communicate the point of the photo, which was the bright, vivid colors and the fact of this very interesting out of place and just sort of timeless building. This could be a building that was made in the 50s. This could be a building that was made in the 80s. This could be a building that was made you know, 10 years ago. I think it just has a very timeless feel. You look at all the things, there's stuff from every generation. The Pepsi uh, vending machine looks like it probably could have been from the 80s or so. 
You've got this blank empty sign, which is a thing that I love. I love that blank empty sign. I think this is by far the best composition that it had. Again, the only thing I would do differently, and obviously from this angle, it's impossible, was I would include some sort of bright red element on the right side of the composition to more balance it out. I think that just would have given it the icing on the cake, but obviously, at least from this angle, which I think is the best angle, that wouldn't have been possible. So, I mean, beggars can't be choosers. You can't move over to get a better angle, but then also ask for the fire hydrant that's 15 feet behind you to be there. You, you can't do that. So I'll take what I can get. I think this is by far the best. All right. So thank you guys so, so, so much for watching this second episode of Snapshot. I have another video in the works. It's already filmed. We'll actually go and visit a very seedy, shady motel. Stay tuned for that two weeks from now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Servanov underscore. That's my photography account. And also at Sergey underscore speaks. That's my more general comedy account. That's where I post funny videos. Videos to make you forget that we're in the middle of a global pandemic and no one knows what to do and we're probably all going to die. If you want to forget about that, follow Sergey underscore speaks on Instagram. Also make sure to watch Sergey Speaks on this YouTube channel, Servanov, every other Friday at 12 p.m. noon Central Standard Time. I will be releasing a video of Sergey Speaks. Those are the funny videos at the same time that this is, but it's every other week. Make sure to tune in to my podcast, The Sound of Sergey on Spotify free. It costs zero dollars every Friday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Go check that out. Go follow me on there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Give me feedback and I will see you next week. is over. It is so hot, my goodness. My back is sweating. Let's turn this fan on. My lord. Oh. This shirt is physically damp.